This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by Kevin Ajarko. Kevin, how's things, mate? Yeah, not too bad. Um, settling into Liverpool, obviously, uh, just out of the session, so everything's good. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll get straight to the point here that the reason we'll have you on today, you left the iBox gym, and you've left Eddie Lamb, you've left Al Smith, um, and you've joined Joe McNally in Liverpool. How did that, that change come about, and why? Um, yeah, so just, I kind of had made my decision um, kind of halfway through my last camp that I needed to change. I just wasn't happy in London anymore. I wasn't happy in the gym, and the coaches could tell. Um, although I didn't have the chat with them until until after my fight, obviously. Um, but yeah, I sat down with, with the iBox coaches and just and told them how I felt and felt like I needed the change. And they understood and we left things on good terms. Um, and then obviously I was in search of a new coach. My manager, Paul Reddy, and, and STN had suggested um, Joe McNally and, and Declan O'Rourke. So um, yeah, I come over on Friday to try things out. Obviously, you know, you, you've said that there was a specific time that you remember. It was halfway through the last camp. Was there a specific, you know, thing that made you change your mind on iBox? Was there a specific moment in time that you decided, you know what, maybe this isn't for me? Um, do you know what? I think the last year um, at iBox, I wasn't happy and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. I had some personal issues going on. Um, obviously, I had changes with my manager and um, promoter. I, I was blaming all on, on them things and then when them things had changed um, I still wasn't happy and um, there was only one thing left and I could see see slight dips in my performances and um, yeah just just not being happy in the gym and stuff and um, I just felt like I needed to change uh, I just like I box the, the coaches are unbelievable coaches um, but it, it is a very busy gym I'm, I'm at a stage where I need one-to-one -one attention and where I'm going to be learning and improving every single day in the gym. And um, yeah, just uh, obviously after the fight, I'd sat down and with the coaches and just told them how I felt. Uh, I mean, you've kind of said there about it, you know, from, looking from the outside in, things seem great with you, Al Smith, Eddie Lamb. They probably still are. I imagine they are. Um, but you are, you've, you've said it there, you're the type of fighter who needs the attention and you need kind of one-to-one -one time in the gym. Do you think maybe it was just the fact that there was too many fighters in the iBox gym? Um, listen, there's, there's, a, there's a lot. There's a couple of reasons. There, there was a lot of fighters. Um, yeah, there's, I, I don't know. I don't know what exactly what it is. Listen, Al's, Al's a great coach, a great man, but he has a business. Um, and I'm someone who, who needs one or two hours of attention. Um I like to train early in the day and stuff like that. And, and Eddie Lamb does that, but I just felt I got to a stage where not that I'd stopped learning, but I'd stopped, I just wasn't happy. I wasn't necessarily improving massively. And um, yeah, like I said, I just, I, you just know yourself when, when you need a change in life. And um, like I say, the, the coaches in iBox, are, they're great people and they're great coaches. That It's an unbelievable gym. But I've, I just feel like I got to a stage in my career in my life where I needed a change. I wasn't happy, and this is a very short career, and um, you only you only get one. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, I I had to do what was best for me. You announced today that you'll be joining Joe McNally in Liverpool. Obviously, a change change from the London lifestyle down in Liverpool. How come Joe McNally? What does he bring to the table that that maybe you you weren't getting um at the iBox gym? Um, I think Joe's a, <laughs> technically a very very good coach. Um, he's not egotistic. Um, he's not one of these coaches that are on social media and it's all about him and, and stuff like that. Nor was that like that at the iBox, but um, I just feel like I've heard great things about Joe. I've seen the work he's done with JJ and, and uh, Liam Smith. Um, I've seen how they've improved under him. Um, and yeah, I had, whenever I sat down and had a chat with, with Joe over the phone, I could tell that he was, he was genuine. He, he cares about his fighters. Um he cares about his fighters and um, just he's got an unbelievable boxing brain. So that was kind of the main factor for me um, to, to kind of come down here and, and try things out. And um, one of the things that he said to me in his, in his first session is that I'm not here to take you on the pads and make you look good. I'm here to improve you as a, as a fighter. Do you know what I mean? You can do all this fancy stuff and whatnot, but if you're not improving, you're just wasting your time. And um, that speaks volumes from, from, from Joe. Do you know what I mean? He, he's, he cares about his fighters. He's there to improve. Prove them, and I'm chasing these one percent. I'm, I'm someone who needs 
somebody in front of me telling me exactly what I'm doing wrong and um, kind of drilling me every single day to improve me as a fighter because if not, I'm not going to get to the to the top of the um, the boxing. So in terms of obviously, you know, in Liverpool, did you try anywhere else? Did you go to any other trainers or was it just straight Joe that was it, done dusted? Straight Joe, that was it, done and dusted. Um, like I said, it's there's a, there's a lot of great coaches in London. There's a lot of great coaches back home or or across the water. And um, for me, I whenever I made this decision, I didn't know where I was going to go. Um, I was thinking of going over to America. But when I when I like I said, I think Joe won me over whenever I spoke to him on the phone. Not that he tried to win me over, but I just liked what he was saying. I I could tell he's a genuine person. I, for me, I don't care how good a coach you are, but if I can't get on with you as a person, if you're not genuine, if you're not got my best interest as a coach, um, if you're egotistic, then I'm wasting my time. And um, I did have a couple of options that I was going to try out. It was Joe and, uh, and another another gym, but as soon as I come down and, and trained with Joe, I, I knew straight away that we, we clicked straight away. Um, his, his kind of boxing IQ and style and... Um, what he can add to my game, um, it, it it won me over, so I didn't have to train elsewhere. You'll have some great sparring in that gym, obviously with, with Liam Smith and JJ Metcalf. How important is that for you? Oh, it's massively important. Um, I struggled a lot to get sparring in, in London. Um, and I used to spar the boys in the gym, great lads in, in the box, but no one was my weight. They were all welterweights um, or, or lighter. And... Uh, to have JJ and Liam, two fighters that obviously JJ's coming off a, a great win against uh, Kermit Roger. Um, Liam is on the brink of another world title. He, he's been there, done it. He's won everything. Um, and he's coming off a great win again, against Fowler and, and Jesse Vargas. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that's valuable knowledge that, I, that you can't buy. Do you know what I mean? The Browns that you can't buy, I'll learn so much of, of them two lads. And you got other fighters in the gym that, that are very good. Um, Thomas Whitaker Hart, and um, there's a little, uh, I think, like Wake called Frankie. You've got Scott Forrest, who's heavyweight. You know, there's, a, there's a, a lot of talent in the gym. Callum Smith, so we're training, obviously, he changed the body with Gert, but he finishes camps so up over in Liverpool. And to have that kind of talent and um, experience in the gym, it's, it's stuff you can't buy. Do you know what I mean? This uh, this obviously rules out a fight with JJ because that was spoke about before that there's a potential. How do you feel about that? Obviously, um, listen, it is what it is. Uh, there's other options for me. Um, Joe had said to me that when we spoke that I, I was never going to get that fight anyway. Jo- JJ's at a different level in his career than I am. I'm I'm a twelve fight novice. Uh, do you know what I mean? JJ's um on the brink of kind of breaking into world level. He's He's, I think he's top, top five or six in the, in the world with the WBA. Um, so, yeah, listen, it, it, would have, it would have been a great fight for me and, um, and everything would have been good for my career, providing that I won the fight. But it just means I get to spar him and, and learn off him. Do you know what I mean? Who, who is on the horizon for you? Obviously, you're, you're down at like middle now. Who, who's on the horizon for keeping a jargon? Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I would love a, an, an all Irish uh, dust up. Back, back home in Belfast that's my main priority is to come back home next year and um, start headlining shows but for now we're, we're going to fight one more time before the end of the year I hope to be out in October early November um, and yeah do you know what it'll be another step up I'm not too sure who it'll be um, my team are, are working on a date and as soon as we get a, a date finalised we'll, uh, we'll get an opponent um, but uh, I'm not a domestic fighter so your Troy Williamson's your your uh, Josh Kelly, Sam Eglinton, unless it's for a European title or or a meaningful fight, it doesn't really interest me. They're, they're very good fighters, but it, it's got to make sense for my career. Like I said, I'm a 12 fight novice. Um, I am top 10 in the world with two uh, with at two weights with with the WBA, but I'm 12 fights in, 25 years old. I've still got a lot of learning to do, um, and I don't I don't need rush. So we'll just see who who we get, we get next. But I think my main goal is to start headlining shows in Belfast next year and push towards European level. I want to win a European title and then push on to to world honours. You you've been very focal yourself about wanting to come back to Belfast. I mean, when when I first spoke to you after when you were on the podcast, you spoke to me about obviously you told us that Belfast is your priority. You want to get back there. Frank Warren couldn't do it. You've moved to Eddie. 
are you happy with your career trajectory on their matchroom at the moment? And is there a, a fight in Belfast on the horizon for you? Oh, massively. The, the way Eddie's been promoting me is um, is next to none. I mean, three fights in eight months, two title fights and a defence. Um, they're meaningful fights, do you know what I mean? He's I'm now top 10 in the world um, at two weights. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I couldn't be happier um, with the decision to move to Matrim and, and what they're doing for me and what Eddie's doing for me. Um, we have discussed um, Belfast. Belfast is a main priority for me and, and Eddie knows that and Eddie, um, he, he believes in that, that vision and, and wants to bring me back home. But I also understand that it has to be a meaningful fight. It has to sell to the to the uh, to the Belfast fans, do you know what I mean? It, it's got to fill an arena, which I, I think it will. You, you know yourself that the, the Belfast fans, the Irish fans get behind their fighters and um, I know whenever I come home it's going to be special and everyone's going to get behind me and that's why I want to go home because I, I get so much support from the Belfast fans and uh, the Irish fans in general, do you know what I mean? They, they, they support me and um, I, I feel like I need to repay them. So, yeah, it's definitely been spoken about Unfortunately, it didn't happen this year and it won't happen this year, but I will be knocking on Eddie's door after this fight every single day to make Belfast happen next year. Definitely. And obviously, before I let you go, there's some massive fights on the horizon. We'll start with next week. AJ Usyk, who do you fancy? I would love to see AJ win. I'm a fan of both both fighters, um, but I would, um, I would love to see AJ win because I feel like he gets a lot of crit- criticism when he shouldn't. Um, but it's a tough, tough task. Um, unless AJ can bring the dog on him that he once had when he used to when he fought um, Dylan White, uh, Klitschko, and, and stuff like that. Unless he can bring that back in him, I don't see another outcome. I, I see Usyk winning again and, and potentially stopping him. But I hope he's made the changes with this new coach and he and he can um, change something and, and be more aggressive like he once used to be. But it's a tough task and. If I had to pick one out, I'm going to have to go with Uzik. Interesting. Um, next up, Canelo, GGG. I think I know your answer for this one, but 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 who do you fancy? Right now, I'm going to have to say Canelo. Um, I do believe GGG won both of them fights. I'm a massive Canelo fan, and I'm a, I'm a Golovkin fan, but um, I do believe that Golovkin won both fights. But Glovkin is four years old now. In his recent fights, you, you've seen him slowing down. I don't know, because maybe not boiling his body down at 40 years to make middleweight and up at super middle, it might be an advantage for him. But Canelo's in his prime years now. And he's going to be, obviously, they will beat him, but it's going to be very, very hard to, to beat Canelo at, at, at super middleweight. And obviously, he, he needs that massive comeback win after the Bivol defeat. So, so I'll agree with you on that. Finally, Obviously, Eddie is massive news this week in Eubank Junior Ben. How big is that fight? And is there a potential that maybe Kevin and Jarko was on the undercard? Are you not going on Eddie's door asking that question? <laughs> um, it's a massive fight, massive fight for British boxing. Um, obviously, the, the dad's fought twice, and um, it's it's great that it was able been it's been able to be made. At the start, I didn't really think it made sense because I don't see hard boosts ever their careers other, other than financially. I think it does more so for Conor Ben's career if he, if he gets a win against Eubank than it does for Eubank if he beats uh, Ben. But I'll not be on that on the card. Um, unfortunately not. Um, unless anything, something changes, um, I'll, I'll not be on the, on the card. We, we, we plan to kind of go late late October, start of November. Um, I want time to kind of gel properly with, with Joe and um, have, a, have a full camp. I don't want to rush things and, and jump jump into a fight too soon so um, yeah I want to fight end of October start of November um, but it would be unbelievable to to obviously be on that card if I, if I got the call I'll jump in definitely well Kevin look, thanks a million for joining me today and I'm sure we'll do this again soon um, before and after your next fight so thanks a million mate really appreciate it perfect thank you very much mate yeah I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight I've gone back to the dad I've punched him a few more times my bloke's outside my front door you coming out one hell of a fucking story so stay tuned
Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.